Today we're going to be covering why men seem to give you the silent treatment after a breakup. Now I do realize the irony of me covering a topic like this. After all, I am one of the biggest proponents of the no contact rule, which in and of itself is a form of the silent treatment. But still, many people ask me, why isn't my ex-boyfriend contacting me? Why are they giving me the silent treatment before I use the no contact rule? And so what I'd like to do today is go through some of the top reasons for why this happens, backed up by science, psychology, and our own personal findings. Let's get started. Reason number one, it's an avoidant coping mechanism. If you've been familiar with some of the latest videos I've done, I've been really focusing hard on fearful avoidance, which is basically a subset of the attachment style theory. See, attachment style theory basically states that there are four main attachments that people have when it comes to relationships. You have the secure attachment, which is kind of like the holy grail. This is the person who is going to handle a breakup the right way. They're going to allow themselves to be open to a relationship. They'll give space to someone when the person needs space. They're not overly anxious. Usually, and generally speaking, we're finding we are trying to take our clients from one type of an attachment style towards being more secure. Then of course you have the anxious attachment style. This is the person who is the typical, wants to control everything in the relationship. They need to know where that person is at all times because they're so anxious. They, in their entire identity sometimes gets enveloped into this relationship so that if that relationship begins to falter, they take it as an, a personal affront. So during breakups, these are the type of people who will stalk their exes, who will call their exes a million times, blow up their ex's phone with text messages, show up unannounced at work, doing all those types of crazy behaviors. And then of course we have the avoidant attachment style. Now the avoidant attachment style is what most of our clients' exes usually are. So when we're looking at men who are giving you the silent treatment, well, that is a very avoidant trait. Rather than dealing with any type of intimate problem where they have to allow themselves to open up and potentially get hurt, they would rather push you away. And sometimes it is literally a situation where they want you away so they don't have to think about you. This is their way of coping with pain. And then finally, the fearful attachment style is kind of a mix between both avoidant and anxious tendencies. But really when you're looking at the silent treatment as a whole, it is an avoidant coping mechanism. Rather than allowing themselves to grieve in a way that a secure attachment type of person will, and really in an obvious way that an anxious attachment type of person will, they would rather not think about the problem. Instead, they would rather distance themselves from the problem. Now, the bill will come due eventually. What's interesting about the anxious and avoidant attachment styles is usually the anxious attachment style has this horrendous grieving process at the beginning of a breakup. The person breaks up with them and they do everything they can to try to win this person back. They go through this incredible grieving phase that lasts a very long time. And then eventually they find someone new to hang their anxious tendencies on. The avoidant person will eventually go through their grieving phase, but only when they feel safe to do so. And oftentimes the only way they feel safe to grieve is when they feel like that person that they were with is successfully moved on from them. And so again, your ex giving you the silent treatment is a very avoidant trait. They would rather not think about the breakup with you or think about the relationship with you so they just decide they're going to ghost you and pretend you don't exist. Reason number two, it's a form of emotional control. Okay, <laughs> this one really sucks to hear, but we actually see it quite often. If, and I don't have numbers in front of me, so this is not technically the most scientific statement that I'm about to make, but off the top of my head, just based on my own gut feeling personal experience with dealing with reason number one, reason number two, it's literally like 50-50. Half of the time, we're just finding exes are extremely fearful, avoidant. They want to ignore, so they don't have to cope with the breakup. The other half of the time, especially if you're implementing a no contact rule, it's kind of that revenge mentality, an eye for an eye. After all, misery does love company. So even though your ex broke up with you or the man broke up with you, they will still paint themselves as the victim. I talk about this concept a lot throughout my YouTube videos, throughout my podcast, and throughout articles where men will break up with you, but 
in their mind, they have to be the heroes of their own story. And so they'll tell themselves these, not necessarily untrue things, but they will present facts in ways that make them look more favorable, if you will. Well, you made me break up with you because you weren't this perfect person I was expecting you to be. And so what they do often, especially if you're using a no contact rule on them, they will try to give you the silent treatment as a way to emotionally manipulate you, as a way to hurt you the way you hurt them. And we see this happen a lot. In fact, I am 100% guilty of doing this in one of my very first breakups ever. I remember my first thought after I broke up with this person was literally, look what you made me do. Ridiculous, right? I'm just being insecure myself. But what's interesting is after that first thought, my second thought was I'm not gonna talk to you until you talk to me. I'm gonna give you the cold shoulder the silent treatment. And of course, weeks go by without talking to my ex, and guess what happens? She eventually reaches out, and at that point only was I willing to talk to her. And it was an untruth. The truth was that I was really responsible because of my anxious behaviors for the end and demise of this specific relationship. And yet I painted myself as the hero in the relationship and her as the villain. And so I used the silent treatment to kind of get back at her because of the pain that I'm feeling inside. Real quick, I wanna say that if you're new to this YouTube channel or you're trying to figure out what you should be doing to get your ex back and you're trying to learn if you even have a chance in your specific circumstance, probably the smartest thing for you to do is actually stop by our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com or take our ex recovery chances quiz that can be found at exboyfriendrecovery.com. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, taking that free quiz is super easy to do. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can fill it out and get an easy answer on what you should be doing going forward and overall what your chances look like in your specific situation. All right, so let's get you back to the video. I did this talk a couple of uh, months ago with Coach Anna where we talked a lot about anger. And I think this is especially relevant here because I think a lot of the times if your ex is gonna use the silent treatment on you to emotionally manipulate you, it's coming from a place of anger. And what she said I thought was incredibly insightful in this interview. She talked about the fact that a lot of times anger is you projecting your own shortcomings onto other people. And so oftentimes, especially when it comes to breakup, when you get angry, oftentimes you're getting angry and being ridiculous because you're afraid of the fact that you are guilty. So here's like a common example of this in real life. Our minds know exactly what to say to us to hurt. You know, we, we can't fool ourselves. And so when I look at myself and try to analyze the first breakup I ever went through, I try to paint myself as the victim. I am being hurt. She hurt me. And of course, I project that onto her. Because she hurt me, I'm angry at her. And because I'm angry at her, I'm gonna give her the cold shoulder. But here's the reality. The reality was it was too hard to admit to myself that I was at fault for this breakup, that my anxious behaviors got in the way, and as a result, to protect myself, I broke up with her. That all stemmed from the anger inside. And I think you're gonna find a lot of that happening with the emotional manipulation aspect of a breakup. Reason number three, your ex is looking to see your reaction. Uh, this is something that happens enough times to warrant a spot on this list. All right, so how does this work? Well, sometimes your ex can simply be giving you the silent treatment because they're looking to see a reaction. I think especially we see that happen uh, a lot during the no contact rule as an example, and we see these knee-jerk reactions from exes who have the no contact rule done on them. In this weird way, our clients are literally sitting there and saying, oh wow, see, he does love me, or he did care about me. Because there's always this doubt, especially when it comes to breakups, if the person sort of cared about you at the level that you thought or perceived that they did. And sometimes what we can do is use the silent treatment, which I guess is another way of emotionally manipulating you to find out this information by not talking to them. If they respond to me or try to reach out to me in any single way, I'll know that they care about me. 
Reason number four, out of sight, out of mind. So I told you kind of the story of my first breakup, but I've had other breakups since then. And what's interesting is I really tried to take that first breakup and learn from it. And with the subsequent breakups, I feel like I did, but I feel like I did not in necessarily the most healthy way. So it's kind of like stumbling from one mistake to a smaller mistake, but I, my thinking I think was sound to help illustrate this point. Right, so I go through this breakup, and the first thought is always, well, let's remain friends. I tried that before, and it didn't work. So with my next breakups, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to cut them out so I don't have to look at their faces. I'm going to block them on Facebook. It's easier for me if they're out of sight, they're out of mind. I don't have to worry or obsess about them. I can simply just move on with my life and sort of pretend that they didn't exist. Again, that's a little bit of the avoidant side of me. It's easier for me to operate in life if I don't have to think about them constantly and have these constant reminders. And yet, what's really funny is it always seemed to happen with music. I love music. I love music just as much as every single other person who loves music, right? And yet, you have these memories embedded into music when you're listening to it. And so sometimes I would just have them out of sight, out of mind, and a song would come on, and I would think about, oh wow, I was with this person during that song, and it makes me and brings me back to that mentality, and it hurts. So I think when you're looking at the out of sight, out of mind, it's simply another coping mechanism that especially an avoidant will employ or engage so that they can move on from the breakup. They find it easier to literally pretend you didn't exist, but sometimes it's hard to avoid things that are out of your control. You saw that with the musical thing example I just gave you. So again, one of the reasons that your ex could be giving you the silent treatment is to keep you out of sight, out of mind, so that they can move on from the breakup. Reason number five, the reverse no contact. This is probably the most rare <laughs> occurrence of the silent treatment that I've ever engaged in, but we've been around long enough to actually see it happen a handful of times. So I do know it exists, but it is rare. With the advent of the internet, the no contact rule has become more and more mainstream. People learn about what it is, especially after a breakup. When I went through a breakup, I went to high school, between the years of 2004 and 2008. Basically, the iPhone hadn't really come out yet. Text messaging was still in its infancy. And to me, getting online wasn't about going to Google and typing in searches or going to YouTube and typing in searches. It was about playing video games. But with the advent of these, more and more we get answers quicker. So oftentimes what we're finding is most of the people come into our ecosystem either through these YouTube videos or through some of the articles that I write in Google. You can get quick answers. And so with that quick answer, we find more and more people are familiar with what the no contact rule is as opposed to when we started in 2013. So sometimes what can happen is when you put in your mind, you're going to use a no contact rule on your ex. They, in their mind, decides they're going to use a no contact rule on you. And yes, we have had cases where we have had people sign up for coaching in our program who have dated each other, who are trying to get each other back. Easiest success stories you can imagine, right? So what can happen with the silent treatment very rarely, but it does occur, is sometimes your ex could be trying to use a no contact rule on you. So how do you know? Well, here's where I differ from a lot of people. Most of the people who implement a no contact rule will always sit there and tell you, you need to wait until your ex reaches out to you. Yet our evidence has been backed up by hundreds of situations where really we're finding most of the people who employ a no contact rule, well, the person that they're employing it on won't reach out to them. In fact, in 60% of cases, we have found that it's usually you that have to reach out to your ex. 40% of the time, they'll reach out to you during the no contact rule or what have you. So you can't always just expect that your ex is doing a no contact rule on you simply by waiting 30 to 45 days and waiting to see if they reach out to you. Sometimes you need to be the one to broach that. So Really the best way to tell if that's happening is if you're in the middle of a no contact rule, wait until your no contact rule is over and then reach out. If they respond to you and it's after a good amount, then probably that's going on a little bit. Usually with the silent treatment, they're not going to respond to you at all. 
So this one's a little hard to diagnose, yet we have seen it happen because we have had people literally doing it on their exes. Just kind of a fun little reason that we're adding in there.